we <laughs> Mike's playing this Nico system. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if we're saying that right, but I believe it's French. So yeah. I'm, yeah, it I'm pretty sure it's Nico. Nico. We'll talk about it in a little bit. Yeah. Putting it away, I trapped an ant in there apparently. <laughs> okay. Go. So yeah. So we're gonna talk about uh, what we did last week. And um do you, do you want me to just start? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So uh, we did a lot of inspections, like a lot. Uh, we inspected, I think, every single one of our colonies, actually. Every hive. Every single one. Uh, we did some manipulations. We uh, started some queen rearing stuff also mm -hmm. that Mike will be talking about in a little bit. Um, one of our hives, good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Evening for us, but that's okay. <laughs> yep. Where are you coming from? Well, just yeah, keep talking, okay. but they'll type um, it in. Yeah, so one of our hives had uh, some queen cells, and queen cells are a little bit different than queen cups because they have eggs or an egg or a developing larva or whatever. Um, but one of them had several. Ah, oh, Ohio, nice. Yeah. Um, they were here on the last live yes because yes, now I'm, I, I can see the name now so uh -huh. i'm like oh okay yeah. they should have remembered that did you want me to pull it up on that? no no okay. it's fine sorry we discussed me pulling the chat up on my phone so we could see it a little bit easier because we had a little bit of a hard time last time just wanted to make sure um yeah so we had uh one of our hives had uh at least two swarm nuts yeah Swarm, swarm cells. cells. Yes, they yeah. were swarm cells. Um, so we took the queen out of that. Uh, good afternoon, James. Hi. We took the queen out of that hive, put it in a nuke with uh, a couple of frames of brood and some honey, mm -hmm. and essentially did a split. And we're going to let the bees just finish natural progression and make their own queen like mm -hmm. they'd already started on. So hopefully they won't end up swarming. That's the plan. Sure. But the the swarm cells that we found were in the war A, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So. Okay. Um. Oh, and then we had a we we did a swarm catch too. We did. Yep, yep. Yep. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah, I was like, what are we missing? Yeah, we did a we caught a swarm. Uh, a neighbor. Gave his call and he had a swarm. Uh, actually, his his hive swarmed to his next door neighbors. Yep. We went and rescued it, and he didn't have extra equipment, so he didn't want to keep it. So we got some more free mm -hmm. bees. Yeah, he was super excited. He um he gave us a a call and was like, I don't know what to do. They are at ankle level. They're on a bush. Yeah. They were really low. <laughs> and, and it was it was a lot of fun because we just took our, our bucket that we used to like capture swarms and trees and whatnot. Uh, I had them send me pictures of what it looked like. Kind of talked about this last time, but when we went over, he was very excited about like learning about beekeeping. But he was a beekeeper. Yeah. And and it's really cool when we can meet folks that are just down the road from us because then we can help them out and now he has a number that he can call if he sees something weird and we can be like quasi mentors to him and that's that's the fun of beekeeping and now he knows about our local association mm -hmm. three traps oh wow two swarms yep. that's awesome and this seems to be that's the year awesome. for it because everybody is like ah you don't need to put out swarm traps yet we put them out um, right at middle of March and yeah. we haven't, Early we've gotten March. a lot of activity at the swarm traps, but no, uh, no actual swarms or have entered yet. Like it, and we've, I've started to notice that it's in the morning. First off in the morning, they'll, they'll look at the swarm traps in the middle of the afternoon when they're all foraging, they kind of don't. And then in the evening now, like I just walked back there, we have a lot of activity again. Yeah, for sure. So. So maybe we'll get something in, in one of our swarm shots. We have a few up. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Yep. Um, let me see. What else do we have? But for the for the inspections oh, uh, yeah. that we did over the weekend, so we actually recorded and filmed our Langstroth quick inspections, 
And I made it available to members so that they can see like, how do we do a quick inspection when we have 20 hives to get through? And how do we gain the most information we can from them? Because there's no use in doing an inspection if, if you don't really ever find out what's going on because you're going from inspection to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. And by the time you're done, you're like, I just did 15 inspections. <laughs> uh, so, what did I do to like remember all this information? So we use hive tracks, and I'm sure we've talked about this before, but we use hive tracks. But this, I just got my notes app on my phone because we were trying to do it so fast that it was go do an inspection, run back to the honey shed, take a few quick notes, mm -hmm. get some water because it was pretty warm. Yep. Yeah. It was getting to 80. Yeah. And, um, and then run back out, do another one. Run back in, yeah. quick notes. And while she took notes, I just took some mental notes where it's, what's the goal of us getting into this hive? Is yeah. it to look for swarm for, traps? For is Or not swarm traps. No. Uh, <laughs> swarm, swarm cells. Swarm cells. Yeah. Is it to, you know, find out if there's still a queen in there because the population's super low or why is it? And, and we had one hive that had very little activity, but when we got in there, there's a ton of bees. So that... That didn't really bother me so much, but we did go through each of the frames and I, I showed the members like, and I talked about why we, we went through those frames instead of just inspecting the way that, that we did for all the other hives. Because we don't go through every single frame in a, a 20 hive apiary, it's, no. it's not worth it. No, and we also want to make sure that we have supers on when we, mm -hmm. when we need to add supers because it is during that time. Yep, because you got to check for honey. Uh, today, I just checked our uh, beware scale that we have out there and it said in the last week our high, uh, that particular hive went up 11 pounds so yeah. 11 pounds is that's, uh, that's pretty nice that's looking good it's fine. but it also tells me hey if we're at 11 pounds now if they swarm we, we lose three of those pounds worth of bees plus honey and everything else. so if not more well we just gotta keep an eye on them right yeah. And, and that's that's part of the inspection that we went through yep. to check to see what's important to us. Is it the amount of honey or is it the swarming or is it the health of the bees? And it's always health of the bees first. But Right. Yeah. You got to have priorities. Mm -hmm. So for us this year, it's always health is always number one priority for us. But number two this year is honey, mm -hmm. whereas last year it was expanding the apiary. So yep. we, we did a lot of splits, which we knew we weren't going to get as much honey because mm -hmm. we were doing so many splits, but we went from, what, eight hives, I think, yep. at the beginning of last year? Seven or eight. Yeah. Seven or eight to 20 plus. I think we were up to 22 at one point. I, yeah. Like, it, it was it was getting intense. Yeah, to the point where the neighbor was like, Mike, I think we got a problem. We got too many bees. Yeah. I'm like, you can't have too many bees. <laughs> <laughs> it's not possible. But yeah. what we had done as well was open feeding at that time because I didn't want to go through every hive. And the placement of your open feed is very important. If you place it next to a bush, they're going to go around to all the bushes. Once that feed's done, they're going to go to all the bushes and go, is there something here? If you place it on a deck, which if you go back probably nine or ten videos, uh, in the last year, you'll see we did open feeding and I, I have it on the table on the deck. Well, everybody's deck <laughs> was being checked out for the next two weeks. And people were like, oh, we love having the bees around, except for the one neighbor that was like, I'm trying to enjoy my time on the deck and your bees, like I got to defend <laughs> myself. <laughs> like, they're just looking for food. Yeah. <laughs> they're not stinging you. No, but, but it's okay. We're good yeah. now. And we, we've decided to, to put a cap on it at 20 hives mm -hmm. because of management and yep. full-time jobs and neighbors also yeah. kind of. And if we so. open if we open up the second eight somewhere else, then we can expand. We're not going to stop True. at 20. But True. for for one spot, 20 seems to be the right number. Agreed. Or less, yes. depending on what you can do. But definitely max 20 yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, let me see what else. So when we did, went through the War A hive, yes, we uh, we had to do our, our yearly oh, like cut, you yeah. know, because War A's are this one particularly is a top bar style, and it's it's much smaller. It's a square, and then they just have the top bars, and so the bees over winter will just keep drawing out, and as it gets warm again, they start drawing again, drawing wax out. And they attach it to the windows, they attach it to the walls, everywhere, everywhere. even to the bottom. 
the bottom box, the, the yeah. top frame. The of top the bars box. of the bottom box. Yeah. So, so when you lift a box, the bottom frames mm -hmm. come up with it. And you're like, yeah. what are you doing down there? And I, I think we got some video of that one too. We did. We so, did. so if, uh, is that one for members or is that one going to be for everyone? Yeah, no, that's not, yeah, no. But <laughs> yes and no. So it will be, it will be for members. But we will be, that one particularly is just talking about like, how do you effectively cut all that comb without destroying the hive? And how do you do it without making the bees crazy? Because you're basically going in and you're being, you know, intrusive. Super so, intrusive, yeah. Uh, I, I gave that to the members, but there will be some videos coming out, you know, splices of that throughout the year as well. So you get a little sneak peeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that one took... Oof, much longer a lot longer than mm -hmm. our normal inspections take but it was definitely helpful that we had mm -hmm. two people to do it so what happened was mike would tilt the hive mm -hmm. forward the hive box forward and i would get back underneath and just scrape all along the walls just to detach all of that wax from all of the walls and the windows and everything and uh whew, it takes some work it yeah. definitely took some work but it worked out really well. So yeah. I, I think, I mean, time consuming, but it worked out well. We had fun doing so. it. And I'll, I show you how like you can keep the bees that you're not working kind of happy <laughs> during the time that yes. you're working the other boxes where they're like, eh. which is especially helpful if you're taking longer than you expect to take. Mm -hmm. Yep. And if you go on Instagram, we have a post that has like almost 200 likes at this point. So if you want to heart, <laughs> heart it too, I was I was just like, I don't know where all this is coming from. Oh, no problem. Oh, we're glad you're back. Yep. <laughs> hope, hope the wife's OK. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so other than the, the War A Hive and the inspections on the Langstroth, uh, I got to play with my my Nico, 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 Nicot device depending on Depends what country on you talk to. you're from <laughs> so i i did i did take cells from it but uh this is one of those cool little tools that is supposed to be for like the lazy um queen rear and i got we got it like a couple years ago and i just now got to try it out because in the past like i understand queen rearing and what you have to do i've watched all the michael palmer stuff uh there's the richard guy in Brittany. uh France. I've watched him too, I'm trying to do all the research. And I had it figured out like two years ago, but we never really were at the point where I was like, let's have some mating nukes. Let's have a cell builder. Let's have all these different style colonies. I just want to make honey and get it out there. <laughs> you know? And, and last year was just about splits and making lots of bees. And now we have too many bees and well, now we need money. Yeah. Or, <laughs> we don't have too many we bees. Don't, we don't need too many bees. I'm saying all the opposite things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have. We don't have too many. Bees. We have too many bees. No. And no. we need more honey. But we do need more honey. <laughs> well, our uh, our our farm market. So we sell not all, but most of our honey to our local farm market, and then mm -hmm. they sell it from there. Yep. And um, they were they were not pleased with the amount of honey we brought them last year. No. They wanted, they wanted well the minute more. so we we put it we put it at the farm market and there's a lot of folks in our area that put liquid honey at the farm extracted market honey, extracted, yeah. extracted mm -hmm. and we do cut comb which is just in the plastic box right or yeah. I guess some places have that uh, like paper the box clamshell. but we uh, we gave them enough for what we thought we could give them and the bees could provide <laughs> yeah. and two hours later they said we're sold out can you provide more <laughs> I'm like uh, nope <laughs> yeah I can't do it not this year. Yep. So, but uh, I, I mean, nice problem to have for mm -hmm. them, I guess. But yeah. but I do have to say that we not only give it to to the farm market here, but we also give it to the local um, wine and beer place, yeah. uh, Boonies. And I really like Kevin that that owns the place. So we give him a bunch, and he he sells out pretty quick too. But yeah. and yeah. they sell our lip balm too. They do. And, yeah. and that's uh, that's always something that you can do. You don't have to look at only farm markets. Mm -hmm. There are little local mom and pop shops where you can sell candles or lip balm. If, yeah. if you guys have any suggestions on other places besides like small businesses and, and farm markets, mm -hmm. uh, throw it in the comments. Yeah. And if you're interested in maybe making some candles or lip balm, mm -hmm. let us know because mm -hmm. 
might be working on a video. Yeah, so <laughs> so a couple of the, the suggestions that we got from mm -hmm. other folks is like, do more how-to stuff, do more, you know, how to install a queen. So I, I did that and then how to, how to make candles, how to make pastels, how to make mead, how to, and then fill in the blank. Pastels? That's not what I mean. What's that little thing that you were talking oh, about? Oh, pastel. Wax, so. Pastel. pastel. I, so we're, we're always still learning, right? That's part of, I think that's part, a huge part of beekeeping is mm -hmm. continuing to learn about them. Well, we watched a, a Zoom call um, from Honey Honey. Yeah, H A N I. H A N I in oh Hawaii. God. So it's a company in Hawaii, and they make a lot of candles, tons and tons of candles. So my one question, because I've made candles and they've turned out really well, I think at mm -hmm. least, and people have liked them and bought them, so I think that's a good sign. Um, but my one question was, how do you make the the little pastilles, the little wax pellets that you can buy at the store? And she's like, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, okay. So that's going to be on my on my how to. I'm going to research that this year and hopefully make a video yeah. of of me actually doing it and not failing miserably. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah. It, if if anybody has any cool resources for making for sure. those past, pastilles. Pastilles. Mm, pastilles. Past, not pastilles. No. Pastilles. Pastilles. Okay. Anyway. Just let us know. Yeah. Please. Or if you have a good recipe, just send it to us. We'll make it. We'll we'll <laughs> Share give you a shout else. out. Yeah, because yeah. uh, we had that. Uh, what is it? Commander Bacon. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He he sent us the Longling. The plans. The hive plans. Mm -hmm. And so we went ahead and built that. We're uh, there's another wow. guy, uh, NYK Honey. That's gonna honey, honeybees. I think yeah, he's. NYK honeybees. We talked to him about maybe him sending us some plans for his long laying and, and we'll build that as well. I kind of want to do a lands, but uh, with the, the change in frame size and everything, I'm going to have to make the frames my, myself. I don't want to buy them. So. Which is a little bit more frustrating. Yeah, it just takes time. It is. It's fine. You, you like that. Yep. Uh, what else? Keep looking down at our notes to make yeah. sure we don't forget anything. What else? <laughs> So we, um, we oh, today. Yeah, today. Today. I was very busy today. I, well, the last couple of days I was painting hive boxes. So my fill, goodness, 20 ish, mm -hmm. 20 ish new supers over the fall, winter. And I spent finally, uh, it's nice weather, got to, to go outside with the, the paint sprayer and, uh, make it easy, paint some hives. Super basic, white, nothing fancy for these. Mm -hmm. Not yet at least, maybe later. Um, and then today, all day, I was just making frames to Tip fill to those that. boxes. Nice. <laughs> so hours, hours worth of uh, building frames. But it was nice, it was relaxing, it's very repetitive, but kind of meditative at the same time. And I was just listening to some beekeeping podcasts. Yep. What, which so ones? It was nice. Oh, I was listening to um, Beekeeping Today. It has, uh, oh, Bohemia Air Fury. Oh, Maryland. Nice. Yeah. Welcome. Okay. Um, I played ice hockey up there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was listening to, yeah, Beekeeping Today with Kim Flodum and I can't remember the other host's name. That's okay. Um, we actually met Kim Flodum. Yeah, that's how and, we uh, remember that's him. That's the only reason I remember his name. <laughs> It sounds so bad, yeah. but yeah. Kim, Jennifer Berry. Yeah, we've met, we've met a good good number of uh, beekeeping. Inf influential beekeeping <laughs> bee Beekeeping. <pros>. Um, <laughs> well, what's the word I was going to look for? Beekeeping, like, celebrities, but only for beekeepers, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Um, let me see. I listened to that one. I listened to the Beehive Jive, or the Hive Jive. The Hive Jive. Yep. And then I listened to Hive Talking, which is a fairly new podcast, actually. But and that one's um, that one's out of the UK. She's or out of Scotland. Scotland. Mm -hmm. She's okay. out of Scotland, and then she has a lot of different people, like um, what's his name, Dr. Pettis from the US was on her one of her episodes, and then the episode I listened to today, she had a a lady from London on talking about pollinator gardens. Oh, cool. 
Yeah, cool question. That's pretty good. Yeah, I just I listened to Hive Drive out of Texas on my on my way to you know to and from work, and then um, the BK Corner. I love listening to Kevin, and he uh, he keeps me entertained on my drive too. So those those are good ones. If you guys have any suggestions for good podcasts, uh, we'll take them because we're always trying to. Well, she's she's a reader. I'm a listener. <laughs> Well, I list okay. So my drive to work is considerably longer than his is. It takes him only about what 10, 15 minutes to get yeah. to, fifteen tops to get to work. It takes me about an hour to get to work. So I listen to a lot of audiobooks and podcasts to fill my time, and I get through a lot more mm-hmm. <laughs> because the 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 drive time. But I like it. Nice. Yeah. Let's see what else. Oh, Broodminder. So, Ooh, the Broodminder. Broodminder. Oh, I have that down there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so Broodminder wise, we're. Are you guys familiar with Broodminder? Have you heard of it? It's a, uh, a, they have a scale and then they have internal sensors in the hives. We were introduced to them four, three, 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 four years three ago. Three or four years ago yeah. at one of our meetings. And uh, we ended up spending way too much money that night yeah. <laughs> on, uh, on these because they did a really good job of explaining how useful they can be. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, we got a, a couple of scales and then several internal sensors. Yep. So we got, we got two scales and three or four internal sensors. Four. Yeah. And they were the first gen that they did. And they come in these, like, at the time, they looked really nice, plastic, <laughs> uh, like Almost tabs. Like, yeah. Oh, I don't. I don't even know. They're it's like long, like an, skinny. Kind of like an envelope, but yeah. longer and skinnier. I want to say container, but it's not really a container. It's yeah. just like a, yeah, like an envelope. It's like an they envelope. just fold over. But they looked really nice. The the weighted, um, the scales for the weight are really nice. I'll, I'll yeah. tip my hat to that. Yeah. They're good. They've lasted a long time. The internal sensors, uh, we actually, after a year, had to email Broodminder, the company, and say, hey, what is going on? They're yeah. getting liquid in there. Like, the bees are basically, you know, messing them up pretty good. Mm-hmm. And we installed them correctly. We sent them pictures how we did it and what they look like now. Um, and we were doing video back then, so it was super easy to just justify, like, hey, this is how we put it in. And I have to, I have to say real quick. Excellent customer service mm-hmm. because they listened to everything we said and and got back to us fairly quickly, I would say. Within, within a week. Yeah. 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 And, and they sent us, uh, for the ones that broke, they sent us some new Gen 2s, uh, Broodminder chips. So that was cool. And we put those in and the same thing happened. <laughs> uh, they sent us new cases and everything and the yeah. same thing happened. So yeah. we are going to put out a video on you know, how we're going to install them from now on. They're not, the ones yeah. that are not broken, we have a different idea of how to kind of set them up in there and it's we'll, going to be super cheap. <laughs> we'll see how it works. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it works out how in my head I see it working out. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you'll, you'll see that video in the next week or two. And uh, that, that should be pretty cool because we'd like to, you know, we opened up our Broodminder to citizen science. So you can actually look us up, um, and watch, you know, the the uh, the charts of our scale, and the and the internal too. temperatures mm-hmm. and humidity and whatnot. So that that would be cool to be able to present that to you guys and say, hey, if you look at this chart where that spike is, that's right before they swarmed, or this is what. <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> this is what this is what brood looks like at this temperature. You know, yeah. I, I'd like to be able to share that, but right now we had it in two or three years and. Every couple of weeks, like I have to get in there and, and clean them out and make everything better. So I, and then put it back in. And I'm, I want to set up a better way of doing that. And Lisa had this idea the other day, and we're going to make it a thing. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be cool. Yeah, we'll see. Hopefully it'll work. Mm-hmm. Let me see. What else? You going to talk about yours? Your... Did you already go through all yours? Well, I mean, I, I hit on, I hit on the big points. You're doing that thing like got, guys do in, in high school where you look over at, at the other person and try and okay, take fair, off of their notes. Fair. I won't steal your notes. So my note-taking 
is super basic. Okay. And, and I will say that this time I just literally put them all in my notepad on my phone. And then I copied and pasted my little blurb into Hive Tracks because we do keep our notes in Hive Tracks. I really like the, the reports that we can get from mm-hmm. them. And I do actually pay attention to those. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> War A Hive. Like I'm not, I'm not going to read all of these out, but the biggest thing was for the worry hive that we have was the queen cells, big problem. We took care of, I think we took care of it. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we took care of it. There's definitely still bees in there as of today. So we'll see. Um, all of our hives, we checked, uh, we did a lot of, if you've been following us, we did a lot of queen switcheroos mm-hmm. and every single queen had been released by the hive in the vendor box. So and we're none good of, there. None of our hives have swarmed so far. Yeah. The only queen that we didn't move was the war A queen because sure. at, the, at the time we were doing the switches, um, we hadn't we actually hadn't. done the intrusive cuts yet. And when I went to pull out a frame, it was literally a top <laughs> bar that came up and then there was a strip of honey. And then I looked down in the whole, <laughs> the whole rest of the, the wax and frame yeah. essentially. It's not a frame, but rookie, the whole the, head, the rest was in there. So we just rookie. set it right back, <laughs> yeah. came back a week later, and they had they basically it. sewn it back together, and it was good to go. I pulled it out, and it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's such a, like, oh, God, what yeah. do we do? <laughs> but just, just thankfully, <laughs> thankfully the bees are really good at fixing our mistakes for us. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. So, so as as much it, as we want to help the bees, we I sometimes know, know. we make mistakes, well, and, and we just try and make them not big mistakes. Seriously, yep. um, most of our hives had really really big boost population, mm-hmm. which is a good thing, but that also means we got to keep an eye on them for swarming. So we mm-hmm. are paying attention to that. But um, oh, that's what I was going to say though is when we did the switcheroo with the queens. Uh, we had learned at one of the bee conferences that when you do switch your queens, mm-hmm. they take a day or two before they really start laying. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and on top of that, they were already in a Benton box. So we yeah. stuck them in a Benton box, switched them to a different hive, let, you know, put marshmallows in the end, let them eat, it, eat that, and then release the queen, and then one or two days later. So that's a brood break. And then the whole hive has to get that queen smell, that new queen smell. So hopefully that kind of warded off some swarming until you know next week or the week after and some varroa mites mm-hmm. at the same mm-hmm. time because of the brood break we we do like to um integrate natural varroa mite treatments Method. yeah, yeah. methods so, well i mean it's that's, that's part me, of our ipm to me people are going to preach natural beekeeping all day or they preach like chemical i i don't care about any of that Mine is about healthy bees, and at the end of the day, like, what we are doing is just the IPM steps. Like, the way integrative pest management is set up is you set up a threshold of, like, how many Varroa do you want? Right. Okay, so we are going to take steps to keep from getting to that number, not just wait until we're at that number and then treat. Like, to to me, logically speaking, and, and like, from a not like a doctor standpoint, but like if, if you're not, you're not scientific. Yeah. For sure. Cause if you don't want to break your legs, you're not going to jump off a roof every day until <laughs> it happens. And then you're going to put casts on, like, it doesn't make sense that we're okay. not doing something. Pr- that was extreme. Yeah, that was very extreme, <laughs> yeah. but it doesn't make sense to not but try and do different things before you get to that. We point. definitely try to do some of those natural things <laughs> to mitigate having to treat chemically because we'd rather not have to do that we will if we need to but we'd rather not have to here's a good one so here's a good one brood break is an excellent means so so the, there's <laughs> the joke that that yeah it's gonna be terrible <laughs> gonna be there's so a joke that uh is on the movie um uh magnificent seven and it's the guy that jumps off of a, a 30-story building and as he's passing by the windows people are going hey how's it going tom and tom goes so so far so good (laughs) like as he's falling that's that's to me how the whole like process is if you're not trying to do something to keep you know 
from the bad thing happening, uh-huh. like you're not really helping. So far, so good. When so you're, far, when so you're good. testing your hives for Varroa, so far, so good. Yep. Until you get that Varroa bomb. Yep. Yeah. Well, so, maybe. it happens. But let's hope, for, let's hope so, for the best. So that kind of that kind of uh, ropes us into kind of a full circle with that swarm we caught uh, two, oh, we- two yeah. weeks ago now. Was so it really two weeks ago? I think it was. A week and a half. Anyway. So I went back into that hive yesterday because I said, well, I want to see, like, it's been, a, I, I always wait a week before I even open that hive again. So if we install a swarm or even a package or anything else, wait a week. And then, then after a week, week and a half, take a look. Let see if they're, see if they're drawing comb straight or what they're doing in there. And I went in there and as I'm noticing, they're not drawing comb straight because we do foundationless and that, that happens. I start to straighten out some of the comb. Well, a piece broke off and it was one that was droned. And there was like three uh, Varroa right there in this one cell. And I, I took a picture of it. I posted it on YouTube. So if you go in our community, you'll see it. But uh, yeah, that's that. Not a good sign. Is, yeah, not good. It, uh, it doesn't make sense to me because typically swarms, you get that brood break. And, but, but this get, this one's very susceptible apparently, so you, you I'm gonna have, treat it with do, uh, oh the hops with the uh, hop guard too. Yep. Sorry, um, yeah, you do get phoretic mites though, mm-hmm. and if you have a female phoretic mite, then she could potentially go she with the swarm. Came with it, yeah, yeah, and then just hangs out until it's time to start laying. Yeah, so I'll I'll put it in hop guard too. It's not as uh, I don't want to say it's not as effective, but it. It doesn't seem as strong for the bees. Like I don't see bees being carried out by the dozens, uh, like I do with Formic Pro. Formic Pro does a great job for us, but Hopguard too, I think, is the way that I'm going to treat like some of the weaker ones from now on. Not swarms, not weak, but it's a swarm. It's just starting. You know, it's a baby. Treat it with some baby. Some baby gloves. Some baby gloves. (laughs) (laughs) What? Uh, Let me see what else. Um. A lot of eggs. We did see a lot of eggs, mm-hmm. so that's a good sign too. We've got good queens. Like I said, we did just switch them around in the hives to help try to prevent those queen tendencies. Mm-hmm. We're, that's something new that we're trying this year. Yeah. We're not really sure 100% if it's going to work or not, but you know that's that's part of learning. Who's and who's talking and, about it? It was Jamie Ellis, Dr. Jamie Ellis from yep. Florida, was giving a, a University Zoom, of Florida. University of Florida yep. was giving a Zoom presentation. And, uh, you know, uh, us being us, we always try and ask at least one question in the Zoom presentation yeah. just to get uh, just to get it kind of out there and just to get our name out there, really. But it was <laughs> it was uh, just, yeah. yeah, it was actually an Ohio State uh, Beekeeping Association presentation. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. Because it was if you. Um, any of you guys get a chance to try out the Ohio Beekeeping Association they meetings did. on Zoom? It's so cool because, like, apparently the guy that's hosting it is like some sort of radio DJ. He's <laughs> his voice is epic. I can't even. I, I, no, I tried. It's I tried amazing. to. I tried to mimic it and I couldn't do it. He's yeah. Like, Welcome to the Ohio Beekeeping State Association. <laughs> And today we're going to <laughs> welcome in Dr. Jamie Ellis. But just... they also have some, they've had some great speakers. We've mm-hmm. been to, been to what, three meetings now? Yep. Three, four meetings and they're... on Zoom. They're all free. Yep. They're on Zoom. Excellent. Excellent. And yep. they actually know how to Zoom, which sounds ridiculous, but so, it, it's true. So comparing to North Carolina Association, they do the same sort of thing. They try and get... Um, they try and get a, 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 not professional, but a well-known uh, speaker like Dr. Jamie Ellis to come on. Or Dr. Tarpey. Or Dr. Tarpey. Um, or Mike Palmer was the last one that mm-hmm. NCBs did. Yep. But uh, the, the ability to use Zoom is kind of out of control <laughs> because they'll have, everybody has their camera on. Everybody can talk. I'm like, please hit mute all. Just mute them all <laughs> and then only let a couple people like be able to talk. Yeah. Um, so, and the Ohio beekeepers have that on lock. Like they, they, and they, they create their own chat room, which is like the questions and answers. And then the so other one like that's a, for like just people chatting. They have a mediator basically yeah. where the, uh, the radio announcer guy mm-hmm. just kind of 
reads the questions to whoever the speaker is, yep. and then they answer. He like does. He does an nice. excellent job. Yeah, we we were thinking about just writing an article for NCBs to publish in their their B Buzz, at, just on like best practices for Zoom, because <laughs> yeah. because all yeah, all the associations that. that we've attended like throughout the state on Zoom have had different ways of trying to, you know, mitigate the bandwidth, like usage and how do you keep like Farmer Joe over here from just like showing his face the whole time while he's wearing no or shirt? talking <laughs> the whole time. Yeah. That, that, that's the most frustrating for me. Mm -hmm. Like I don't care about seeing the people, but. Or, or people using the, the fake background and when they move their head, it's like, <laughs> why is there this giant like blur back it's, there now? It's just or when yeah. they, sorry, I could go on forever, where they set up the auditorium seats and then everybody's heads in the seat. Cracks, oh, I haven't seen that cracks me up. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, but we'll keep going. Anyway, um, oh, we did have another oopsie too. I'm looking at my notes. Which one? Which one? Uh, our Magnolia Hive, while we were putting it back together, uh, when we take out our beetle busters, which is our small hive beetle traps, we place them in Sometimes in just the grass kind of stood up against leaning against something. Mm -hmm. This time we put it in the other hive body box because we'd already taken it off. So we're looking in the bottom box. We had the top box off. So we just put it over there instead. So we didn't have to worry about it tilting over. But I forgot to take it back out to put it back in the bottom box before Mike lifted the top box to put it back on so it's spilled yeah. yeah it wasn't that thankfully wasn't that big of a deal because the way that it spilled it just kind of went down the side of the box it didn't actually get on the bees didn't get on any of the frames so we got i think we got pretty lucky there yep but it is something to pay attention and it's something you know as we do these little mistakes you gotta learn from them so that's definitely something that I know I will be paying attention to better paying attention to in the future. Yeah. If you got your beetle traps in and yep. you're moving them around, just don't forget that you left them on, on a box. And when you pick up the box, don't let it <laughs> splash around because we use oil. We don't do diatomaceous earth. Well, even if you use diatomaceous earth, yeah, there's, that's not good for the bees. So yeah. the, the oil gets in their sphericals, which will then it chokes them out essentially, and, and kills them that way, and then the diatomaceous earth, they're just, what, allergic to? Well, I mean, that'll get into their, their breathing tubes, their sphericals as well, mm -hmm. um, and it makes it hard for them, harder for them to breathe. So it doesn't so. make them sneeze a lot? I don't, I don't think bees can sneeze. No. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find one that's, like, sneezing away. I think that's what the little buzz is, when, you, you've heard it before, they go, <laughs> That's them sneezing. I, I don't think that's what it is. <laughs> I, <laughs> what do you guys say? Do these sneeze? <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> we know they don't. Oh, goodness. All right, let's see. What else? Um, oh, something else I guess I can talk about is we don't use queen excluders anymore. No. We have them. Mm -hmm. I think we might even have enough for all of our hives. I'm not 100% at this yeah, yeah. moment. We do. However... We haven't used them in two or three years now. It's been a while. It's been a hot minute. Um, we found that we don't really need to. The queen stays down for the most part. Well, the well, let's box. let's preface that. Okay? okay. So if you have brand new boxes that that are your supers that you're putting on top of your brood box, uh, we do a shim in between, and I was that way, get here. right? But. <laughs> But that way it kind of ex, uh, establishes a barrier between the brood and the honey boundary. Um, but if you just want to just throw them on top of your hive, what you have to do is make sure that those are pulled out and that they have some nectar in them. So it kind of starts that, that boundary for you. Okay. Or use a queen excluder. Okay. Is that what you were going to say? You you just Why don't you thunder. say it? You do it better no, than I do. you just stole all my thunder. It's fine. It's mm -hmm. fine. I was just going to say we use a shim instead of a queen excluder now. Yep. So that's pretty much what he just said. Yep. So but if you want to do the emery style, you do queen excluder, shim, and then your 
Your honey supers. And Emory Shim, if you want to look it up, it is not spelled E-M-O-R-Y, like how I thought it was when we were first learning about it. It's I-M-I-R-I-E. Just if you want to check it out. You have fancy glasses on. Aren't they nice? So <laughs> I have to show these off real quick, okay? Because I did get new glasses because he, he had to say something. I think she fell check for one out. of the Facebook sponsored <gasps> things. Right? Magnets. They're magnetic. I have like 20 different like topper frames for these glasses now. They're so cool. I even have sunglasses. Cool. Just saying. Hair eyewear. If you're interested, let me know. I'll send you my referral code. You can get, I think it's 20% off or something like that. But the base frames are only like $60. Anyway. Yeah, I was staring Back to at bees. them. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the things that, that we got mm -hmm. in maybe year two of mm -hmm. us beekeeping was the, ooh, let's see, no glare. It's backwards. Anyway, it I'll read it to you. So it's the field guide to honeybees and their maladies, maladies from Penn State. <laughs> and in here, there's everything that you kind of need from what does larva look like to what is AFB and, and EFB. And how to test do the like ropey mm -hmm. test. Oh, dis but dysentery. Tons okay. of really good pictures. Really, mm -hmm. really good pictures. So we used to, I don't know why we don't anymore. I guess we don't really need it anymore. In the but, bucket? Yeah. We used to keep it in our hive bucket, which is basically our toolbox for when we go out to the apiary. We don't, we don't keep it in there anymore. It stays in the honey shed though, just in case we do need to reference it for whatever reason. Yeah. I mean, like this section yeah. goes over skunks and possums and what to do and what are your indications a skunk is feeding at your hive entrance or, you know. Um, In case you don't have a trail cam set up, checking out your hives, yeah, which we do. <laughs> trail cam. We also have a trail cam on our outdoor cat, too, so we can our see. Our cat house. <laughs> um, it tells you what to do about bears. And, and let me tell you, if you think that you have bears in your area, what we were told when we first started was set up just a regular fence. It doesn't have to, or um, electric fence. It doesn't have to be like the high cost um, bear fences and put strips of raw bacon on there, right? And just hang them on there. And when the bear goes to sniff it, they'll zap their nose and they won't come back to your apiary. But you have to do it before you move your hives in. Yeah. Because if you move your hives in and a bear finds them, they won't care about the electric fence. Yeah. They'll just storm right through it to get to the hives. I'm sure they care about the bacon, though. We had bacon for dinner tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was good. But, yeah, it talks about bear traps, too, which I, I don't know if, if I would suggest that. I'd rather just do a fence and leave the bear alive. It talks about wax moth. Maybe I won't get I talk whole. about a lot of the stuff also on our website. You do? If you want to check that out. Oh, what's an earwig? <laughs> I always call them something else. <laughs> anyway, but that's an excellent book. Uh, throw yes. it in your, your truck, your back pocket, whatever. And yeah. then when you're out at your hives and you find something weird, you can say, hey, I got a book and look for the picture because that's, that's what I do. I look for the picture that's closest and then I read whatever the paragraph is. I don't try and read front to back. And it helps the it. Penn State Bee Lab yep. continue. Their, and their great, operations do great things the college of agricultural sciences mm -hmm. so they're pretty awesome Ooh, mid atlantic apiculture research and extension in delaware maryland consortium yeah so okay. but oh uh speaking of maryland the uh what are they called the ones that put out the survey every year the informed partnership the informed partnership put out their uh survey for last winter um, they ask you a couple simple questions like how many hives did you start out in April of last year? How were you going through the summer going into the fall? Did you have the same amount that you started with? And then it said during 2021, did you start, you know, with how many hives and how many died? So, so I have to ask you, okay, so Mike filled out the survey this year. I, I filled it out last year. Mm -hmm. Did they ask uh, how you're treating for mites or how often or anything like that? Shout out from Maryland. Yeah, Maryland. yeah, they, they said Woo. that. Uh, they, yes, they did ask how often you were you were treating for mites. But what they did is they set up, uh, you know, the calendar year that March, April, May, June, July, and then 
all the way you know to December, mm -hmm. and then they just put a box that said put how many times you tested. Oh. So, so I put two, you know, because we test about twice a month once we get to June Ish. and on. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah, because we like to we like to start testing right after we pull well right before we pull the honey off, and then if we pull the honey off. We'll start doing some real testing after that, which is kind of the same thing, just with a little more like, is that a Varroa? Is it not? Um, and then we go into August. We take a break because during August because that's the hottest time of the year here. And then uh, September, October is typically when we notice like a migration of Varroa coming in. So we'll have zeros, zeros, ones, maybe zeros, zeros. And then all of a sudden our, our Varroa account will be like 10, 9, 10. So it, it might be the break during August that we take. Um, I don't think last year we did do a break because I wanted to make a video. Mm -hmm. So done. so we sweat a lot. It, it gets to be like 100-ish. Plus. Mm -hmm. And Plus. we're out there trying to beekeep. If you have a ventilated jacket or a whole ventilated suit, just go out there with nothing but underwear on. It is the best feeling in the world. <laughs> like... Just let the wind blow, and and you can be keep with your your jacket on, <laughs> like it's nice. <laughs> or don't, or just be be clothed. <laughs> okay. So. Oh, yeah. Let me see what else. Oh, we we moved some hives. We did move the we hives. We moved some yep. hives. I forgot we did that this week. Um, okay, so we had three three hives. Mm -hmm. three hives on a platform and we've had them there for a few years now and <laughs> yeah agreed hey you want to come down and and beekeep with us <laughs> be ready <laughs> um yeah so we've had those hives on a platform for a few years now and we thought it was a great idea at first and now it's like it's just kind of getting in the way whenever we do our management mm -hmm. so we decided to well, one, one of the hives we moved into the long lane. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other two, we just decided to move onto some center blocks just in front of where the platform was. Because yeah. now it has been taken apart and will be salvaged for a new chicken coop for my girls. So the, the whole point of taking the platform down is, one, I couldn't really move around it uh, and, and I... <laughs> do, do any management. And... The other thing I was really worried about is we have, uh, what are they, black mambas? We got the black, black snakes around black here. rat snakes. That was my concern. I didn't want a snake just, yeah. like, sneaking up on me while I'm so I've been hug. I've been trying to, like, close off the gap at the bottom. <laughs> and, oh, okay. Uh, to make sure that nothing while we're Thanks beekeeping. Thanks for joining. <laughs> oh, while we're beekeeping, nothing from under that platform comes out and gets me in the ankles. Because I'd rather be stung by a bee than bitten by a snake. Because... <laughs> I've been stung many, many times, but I have never been bitten. I've been even, uh, I've been hit by a scorpion once. What? Know. Yep. It was, it was in Oklahoma. Oh, you were yeah. a lot younger was, then. Yeah. Okay. Dalton, Dalton, Oklahoma yeah. at summer camp. Yep. <laughs> My daughter picked up a scorpion. Did I tell you about that? Mm -mm. Yeah. Avery, our, um, our daughter, she's 18 now. Um, but when she was younger, she was maybe I think six years old, picked up a scorpion and brought it to me. She's like, look, mom. I'm like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So cleared out that platform, broke it apart. I moved all the cinder blocks on the rock. Now we have the hives on just normal cinder blocks like kind of everybody else does. Now I can walk all the way around it. I don't have to do a whole lot of bending over still. And uh, yeah, I like that a whole lot better. It's pretty nice. There's always that guy that has to lift the 90 to 100 pound box, and I don't want to have to <laughs> be up on a platform, step down off the platform, and then pick it back up and put it back on the platform. It's, yeah. it's just my knees can't do it. My back can't do it. My hands can't do it. I'm old. <laughs> I don't, I'm older. <laughs> I don't look it. I have good skin. <laughs> uh, let me see. What else do we have? Um, yeah. Oh, and then and then you're up because we took. I don't know what you're talking we about. We took the queen mm -hmm. from the war a hive because we had some. <laughs> yes. Yep. Exactly. 
Um, so we took the queen from our Bore hive because we had those queen cells. And Mike decided to make use of a present I got for him. Oh, yeah, like yeah. Two years ago. Yeah, the. The Nico system. Nico. A pound of honey and yeah. a pack of Twizzlers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So you want to talk about that a little bit or, or how, how you set it up or what do you? Um, so I want to use it and I did use it because I just want, I'm just curious. I just want to kind of try it out and see, ah, that's bad. There we go. And see, <laughs> and see kind of, um, you know, how easy is it? It's supposed to be for the lazy man that, that wants to make queens, but I don't want to make 100 queens, hence why there's only 10 cells missing along the bottom. If you don't know what this is, it's essentially you trap the queen in this box. There's a queen excluder here, and what she'll do is she'll just walk around it and lay eggs in the little fake cells, and then you'll just pull off the back and then put it into... Um, a frame for a cell builder and it's I mean it was super easy for me to use we we don't have queens yet but uh, they're building right now and yeah I for the first time doing it and watching all the Michael Palmer things and everything else like uh, I I'm just a backyard beekeeper at this point maybe maybe a sideliner I don't know but trying to just make a couple of queens if I end up with like 10 queens I'll just give them away at the association or like anybody in the association that needs them so it, it's populating the area but I uh I don't anyway oh, I okay. I don't know what uh what this is going to turn out if it's going to turn out good or bad I'm just giving it a try and if it works cool we don't really need queens but I, if we get them cool yeah. it gives me a chance to you know practice putting a cage on the outside or finding out what I did wrong that the, sort of thing. The good news is she is an excellent queen, so she should make some excellent oh, queen yeah. daughters. This she is like huge. She's giant for sure, but her brood pattern is mm -hmm. one of the best that we have in the apiary. I think. Yep. yep. I I agree with that, and and I'm not I'm not one to say like oh the bigger the queen the better she is, but this one just has a different look about her. Um, her Man, I don't want to sound weird, but her her <laughs> thorax looks really strong the way she walks She's around. She's very curvy. She, yeah, and, and her abdomen is is big, but also kind of like strong, like ox. <laughs> like like that's what that's what she reminds me of. We have other queens. Like we had a small queen two years ago that was our best layer in there, yeah. and she made excellent bees. They were nice. Um, and they focused on honey and and she was you could barely tell her she, from the worker bees she looked a lot like a worker her coloring even was a lot like a yeah, worker but she was tough she was tough and this this one looks like an amazon warrior you know like <laughs> this this queen she's big in every way but not obese it's just a big girl and she commands like she you see her moving, <laughs> moving worker bees out of the way, and they're like, "No, slim down." And she's like, "Whatever, get out of here." You know, she's she's just got a different walk about her and, and look about her. The the other queens are just kind of normal. They they all make good bees. They have a pretty good brood pattern. They're not spotty in any way. But yeah, I just I said, you know what? I'm gonna throw her in here. We'll see if she makes some. And the uh, the Nikot or Nikot Ni Nico whatever, you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, she, I put it in a day prior just to kind of, without the queen in it, just to kind of get it that bee smell. Because I, I don't know if you guys have tried gadgets and whatnot, but when they don't smell like bees, the bees just kind of ignore it or stay away from it. So I, I like to just set it in there, let the bees crawl all over it and kind of figure it out for a couple of days, three, four, five days. That's where uh, this wax kind of came from. This was after uh, two days in the hive. They pulled out wax. So, and it's it's kind of interesting because it was pearly white when I brought it in here, and now it's kind of getting darker. So it's, it's uh, yeah, but it's still soft and malleable. But 
we'll see. We'll see if the the cell builder actually pulls them out. And I mean, they are hopelessly queenless, which I do rabbit ears, and because I, I only found out what hopelessly queenless really meant a couple days ago. <laughs> Because uh, I had, I watched all these videos, I'm like, queenless is queenless. Like, who cares? But hopelessly queenless is when there is no chance that any eggs can be turned in or any larva can be turned into a queen. Everything was capped, and they're all going to be worker bees or drones, and there's no chance of anything else. I was like, yep, that makes sense. And I've been sitting here giggling the whole time. Like, when they say queen, or hopelessly queenless, I'm like, that's stupid. If they're queenless, they're queenless. Like, how do you, how do bees become hopelessly? Like, are they walking around going, never going to happen. It's not going to happen, guys. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Like, they just look sad. They're looking in cells going, not this one. <laughs> and then they just, like, I, I imagine that, what, Eeyore? <laughs> From oh. Winnie the Pooh? <laughs> so not today. Oh. But, well, yeah, now I know. Yeah. What was the comment? I didn't get to read it. Oh, uh... I read it, and I was like, oh, yeah, you I am so sorry that I already forgot it. Hit My memory is terrible. Hit the button. Top chats. Hopelessly queenless can turn into a laying worker. Careful. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I know. Uh, I have used my Oh, yeah, the Nico. Oh, she's. Yeah, yeah, So they were saying the royal jelly. Sometimes they don't put enough royal jelly in. Yeah. So. I'm a little concerned about that. Yeah. But I'm not going to worry right now, because I'm just trying it. And. And they, it's now in that hive. So if if they become laying worker, it, it's a. Uh, by the way, it's a nuke. It's not a. It's not a full hive. So I'm not going to lose a full hive if things get nuts. But we have had laying worker before, and we solved it pretty easily. We did, we did. Yeah. I was very surprised because I heard horror stories mm -hmm. about not being able to have your hive come back from laying workers, yeah. laying workers, because there's never just one. Mm -hmm. And you, you know what, though? Uh, I, I remember Jamie Ellis's name because when he talks about beekeeping, it's, it's really down to earth to me. And it's like, you know, uh, another guy, uh, Etienne, at our club, he does the same thing. He's a master beekeeper. Both of them are. And essentially, they, they tell you, like, all these gadgets are good. Worrying about combining this way is good. Doing it that way is good. But honestly, if you slam them together, you do this or that, they'll figure it out. You know, like. <laughs> These are smarter than we yeah. are. <laughs> That's basically and, what they're saying. And I've, I've actually practiced some of that here and there just to kind of try it out. And he, they're not wrong. Like, if, if you leave a little bit of separation between, like, when you're combining a, a weak and a strong or a weak and a weak, like, hives um, or colonies, they, they work it out. There's there's not a bloodbath or anything like that. And when I, when we were first starting, like, like hear, yeah, tell you. at like, conventions and everything, they were like, oh, if you do this, you make a monster, and there's you know all these dead bees. All the fighting. We have not had that. So we in the past when we've had to combine hives, which we haven't had to do too often, but mm -hmm. we've we've done a few. We've used newspaper and some sugar syrup, mm -hmm. and you know, given the bees time to. You know, get to know each other. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was basically saying we don't need to do that. Just yep. slap them together and they'll work it out. So we like, we okay. did it. We actually did it the other day with a nuke. Yeah, and it was totally fine. And yeah, it was no weird. No issues. They were both. <laughs> yeah. You would have thought so there were two <laughs> two colonies in there. They're both using the same entrance, but no, they were fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, no death, no nothing. Oh, bees are cool. <laughs> Uh, got to run great life. Thanks for sharing. Well, we're glad that you hey. were able to join us. Yep, and we typically don't run an hour. I, I try and shoot for 20 minutes. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, well, did, did you have anything else? Because I, I, mean, I, think, uh, I think we ran through all see. of my list. <laughs> if, uh, if you didn't hear me say it earlier, uh, members are going to have a quick video. Well, not a quick, but like a five-minute video on how we do a quick inspection out in the apiary on Langstroth. And then I did one. Uh, intensive one on on Ware. and then later on I'm gonna have a video for them on the Nico and it's 99 cents to be a member if if you want to do it cool there'll be a couple extra how to and what we do videos um, and yeah it's just a little bit of extra tidbits here and there we'll of course be releasing the the Saturday video uh, that one has ads the members don't because I don't 
believe in them paying for us to do stuff for them and then still getting ads. That doesn't make sense. But uh, we, we try and give them a little more extra things. So even if you're not at that level yet, you have a resource later on. Um, and then we do the live chats. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you guys like them. I, yeah, any interaction <laughs> is great. We love hearing where you guys are from, and yes, then sure. I can relate uh, to that, and you can relate yeah, to that because we, we're world travelers. Yeah, I was gonna say, well, I don't know about world travelers, <laughs> we're, but we're forced we, world we, travelers. <laughs> we are travelers for sure. Yeah, mostly with work, but that's yeah. okay. So, like, like Ohio, I I spent a long time at high school in in Didn't Indiana. We go to a hockey tournament in Ohio. We went to Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Played right before the monsters. That was a couple couple years ago. Mm -hmm. We were up there. But we're we're all over the place. There's um there's a lady tall cedars out of uh, BC Canada, and I used to yep. play hockey up in Canada a lot. So yeah, yeah. That's that's my other favorite thing is <laughs> hockey. I like the Flyers. Hockey, uh, bees. Hopefully fruit. you guys don't follow hockey because you'll know how bad the Flyers are this year. But my <laughs> team's doing great. Yeah. But our apiary is doing good, and yes. we hope yours is too. Yes. Just and we love to hear how you how you guys are doing with your mm -hmm. bees and and if you care to share you know what your goals are for this season we'd love to hear them yep and then if we can we'll give you a shout out in the next live video um and we'll try and gear something more towards you where it's talking about you know what's going on in ohio or what's going on in bc canada or something we'll do some research and figure out something that that we can relate to you so it can be back and forth less of me staring at myself <laughs> <laughs> staring at you but, staring at me um as always you can message us and we we try to to get to all of our messages very quickly how do bees get out of a house using a cone oh the the so trap out the okay is that what they're talking about i think so the bee escape with the trap out yeah yeah that that's be. what it sounds like you want to? Sure. You want to have um, that? So, so if you have a hole in the side of your house, right, and bees are coming in and out, and they're living in the wall or whatever, and you ask a beekeeper to come get them, uh, most likely what they do is they'll either come into the building, cut the drywall, take the bees out, or if you know where the hole is, you can set up a, a bee escape, uh, which is basically a cone that, that covers the whole hole at, at the base. And then as it comes out, it becomes about nine millimeters wide where the bees can walk out, but they have tr a lot of trouble getting back in. And it's by a lot of trouble, but... yeah, one or two might figure it out, but not, not out of a thousand will there be more than one or two. So they come out and what you do is you set up a hive that has um, hopefully a frame of brood in there. And those bees will just come walking out. When they when they come out, they'll go right to that frame. And then there's no way that they're going to get back in because they're going to try and protect the frame. Uh, you don't really want honey to be there because then all the bees in the neighborhood are coming to try and scavenge that honey if, if there's no flow going on. But yeah, all the bees will come marching out. You can um, you can do a couple of things actually. If if you put a little hole on the inside, you can smoke them all out. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of different techniques. But the, the but. main takeaway is it's, it's essentially a funnel where mm -hmm. the bees go out, they can't get back yeah. in. I think, I think there was a post on Facebook yesterday or the day before on, uh, I think it's like beginner beekeeper group or beekeeping group. And there's a, there's a, a group that did that uh, on a tree. They found out where the bees were coming in and out and they put a, basically a bee escape and you can make it out of anything as long as it's you know big at the base and it's nine millimeters at the at the tip the bees will walk out and they don't walk back in now um the the problem with that is it takes a couple of days you know the more that leave and leave and leave then they have no foragers then they promote more to foragers and they leave and leave and then all they have left is the queen and nurse bees and then they by that point they kind of abscond because they don't know what happened to everybody. So they come out and they're like, oh, what are you guys doing out here? But that's, that's our take on that it. that answered your question. Yeah, that was long-winded. <laughs> yeah. uh, but again, uh, if you have any questions, please let us know, whether it be 
on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or thanks Cheryl. You can email us at rascalapiary at gmail.com mm -hmm. or check us out on our website at rascalapiary.com. And our, our website's building up. We're, we got a lot. If you click the learn button that's on there, it takes and you to. I've got, I think, yeah. 50, maybe 50 articles or so now. Mm -hmm. It I takes believe. you to the articles, and that's just based off of the North Carolina study guide for if you want to be certified or journeyman or master beekeeper. Yep. And then we also have another one off to the side that's read that uh, <laughs> takes you just to our, our like diary for the diary apiary. Diary of a beekeeper. It's hard to keep it up. I, yeah, yeah, I got to I got to get better at it. But yeah. that's the plan is basically to put, you know, our observations from being out in the apiary. And it could mm -hmm. just be like a simple, you know, there was a swarm today or or yep. whatever. I don't know. Something that we noticed. Something. I'm but also, there'll be pictures. Yep. I'm also going to try and put on there um, our graphs from the broodminder. So oh, yeah, if I can good. if I can do that once we get them reinstalled. It's just going to be live charts on our page, so you can come and look and go. Oh, okay, this is what their theirs is doing. And if you guys have a brood minder in your in this area, or just have questions about it, you can hit us up, and I'll or try just, and answer yeah. them. Just want some more information because maybe they haven't seen them. Yep. And they're interested. Yep. And there'll there'll be pictures and a video later on of of all that too. Yep. Yeah. So trap outs. I know people are getting packages soon. Or if they haven't got them yeah, already. I, I saw a couple posts today where people were installing their packages. And one lady was saying that she was concerned because she was getting her package. But then wasn't going to be able to install them for like a day or two. And she's like, what do I do with them? Oh, because it was going to rain. Because it was, yeah, it was going to rain. And then she's like, what do I do? I can't keep them in my house. Keep them, keep them in the dog bag. And, well, no, simple, simple answer. You take a couple of frames out of the hive, just stick the whole box in the hive, put mm -hmm. the lid back on. Yep. You don't have to actually install them, like take the queen out, all of that. Okay. Just put the whole box in. Done. Yeah, open the box. Yep. Let them. Yeah. So that that's an easy way to install. Uh, I know that, I think Ken mm -hmm. Flottam was talking about that. You, you stick the whole package in your 10 or 8 frame, uh, and then the, the rest of the frames you leave in there that mm -hmm. you can fit. You take the, the syrup out, take the queen out, stick her in there. Um, if you want a hanger, you can hang her or you just, uh, you know, put two boxes and take the top frames out of the top box and just set her on top. That way, you know, she gets in and out uh, or gets out. She doesn't really go back in. But um, and then you basically installed and you maybe a couple days later. three, four days later, just yeah. come back, kind of open it and then take that box out, dump the rest in there. And then put your frames in and let the frames just kind of sit down on their own. Don't push them and squash a bunch of bees. They don't like that. Definitely not. Well, yeah, that's, a, that's an easy way. Yeah. Um, so packages are showing up. People are definitely getting swarm calls because around, around our area in North Carolina, um, we got called a couple of times. Um, our vice president got a call. Our president got a call. And then um, Etienne always gets calls because he's, <laughs> he's, he's the swarm he's, coordinator for our association. Yeah. Well, plus we have a couple master beekeepers in our area, but he is like the pinnacle of master beekeepers. <laughs> you know, like he's, he's really good. He's easy to approach and, and he has a lot of knowledge and he doesn't try and fill your head with anything. He just waits for your question and he goes, I mean, you can do that, but this is what I do, <laughs> you know? And you're like, He's telling me not to do that, right? Or is he telling me to do that? Because I can do that. What is he telling me? Tell me, you Etienne, what to way do. Too much of the things. <laughs> uh, but anyway. Yeah. So people call him, and then if if it's up in our area, he calls us and says, "Hey, go out." Or yeah, because he's me he's, specifically. I don't know how he got my number. Did you give him my number? I'm sure you gave him your number. I did. I barely I talked to him. Just give your number away to people. But I give my number away to people. You know who did? <laughs> Mike probably did. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Another Mike. Yep. Uh, in your in your first two years, don't be shy to go out there and try and catch a swarm. Free bees. For sure. And and if Ooh. if you know 
like you're on the list if you tell the swarm coordinator hey i'd like to just attend one to see what it's like mm -hmm. uh they'll call you too they'll yep. call you multiple times and you can go see everything that happens and if you're interested in catching swarms we have a swarm buckets video for how mm -hmm. to make one uh it makes it super easy if it's like 20 yeah. foot ish in the tree you it's, have to get a ladder out it's honestly been a lifesaver for us it's, it's really caught us fun. maybe 30 or 30 no. or 40 really that many over the years mm -hmm. yeah maybe I don't yeah. Know. anyway super helpful so if you're interested you can go check that out it's on our channel somewhere it's last year this time <laughs> <laughs> so back um, so if yeah. if you look at the progression of our videos it goes okay amateur hour and then it's kind of like gets a little bit better but i feel like this year we're starting to nail like a, a good system down hopefully i i know there was one person the only actual criticism we really got is he was like i can't watch your videos because i hate watching your videos <laughs> i'm like how do we make that better that's sad <laughs> how do we reach I this guy <laughs> but he didn't say why uh no oh but but that's okay can't please everybody. Yeah. I'd like to, but I can't. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to call it a night. We hope you guys have a good night. Yeah. And remember, happy bees are healthy bees. <laughs> I see it backwards now. Healthy bees are happy bees. Yes. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like uh, <laughs> brown cows make chocolate milk, right? What? Oh, I thought there was a saying like that. Oh, no. Happy cows come from California. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, have good a good night. night.